One of the hardest things to do in writing is to write an interesting character. You want them to be strong in their convictions, but you don't want them to be unchallenged. You want them to face danger, but you need to actually believe that they could possibly be in danger. And yet in movies and other stories, you see people struggle with this all the time. So let's take a look at two characters, one done really well, one not so much. This is our discussion on Ray versus Cora. How do you take somebody who is innately powerful and make them interesting? Well, you put them through trials and tribulations, you might question their place in the world. You might actually have characters question the need for them to even be around in that situation. You might sit there and say that, okay, well, just because you're innately powerful, why should I care? What are you doing to help me? What are you doing to help society? You're just there. You're powerful. Okay, cool. Color me impressed. Or trying and actually impress me. I'm not just innately impressed. They didn't do that with Ray. No, no, they, 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 no, they, did, they, did they didn't not. do that with Ray. I, I and it, and 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 Daisley Ridley delivered some the, the best performance she could with what she was given. Oh, and I don't think you know this is not a comment on her acting. No, it's I, um. I think she's a fine young lady who was given the chance of a lifetime to work on a franchise like Star Wars. Oh yeah, and she did the best she could. It's but, not her fault that, you know, J.J. Abrams, Ryan Johnson, and Kathleen Kennedy didn't know where they wanted this trilogy to go. No, it's not. And and that's the one thing that I, I, I sit here and I think about this. And I, 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 I you know, the, the, the idea around film and television, oh, you just don't like strong female protagonists. Well, that's a bunch of BS. Yes, One of my is. favorite strong female protagon, protagonists who was innately gifted... And not just innately gifted, but hugely powerful in the world. You know, bullheaded and stubborn was Korra from The Legend of Korra. Or the, oh, absolutely. The and, you know, you watched Aang through his journey. He had he was an airbender. Yeah. And when he tapped into the Avatar state, he could do some amazing things. But that's because that's his past lives. Yeah. Lending their knowledge. Then he could firebend, earthbend, waterbend. Mm -hmm. But he had, he had to learn them. But one of the earliest scenes with Korra is her water, earth, and fire bending out of as a, a room child. as a, like a three, four year old kid. Yeah, just maybe five at the oldest. And yeah. go, I'm the Avatar. And so inherently gifted. And yet she's a fascinating character because of what the writers uh, well, because had they, happen. You know, one of the things. Her that, character grows. You know, one of the things that, you know, you, you watch and, and, and you look at, especially when it comes to Rey as a character, um, she never really took any damage, no, emotionally or physically. No, they they really tried to convey this emotional strain that, at least as far as story was concerned, just never came out. Well, when you have somebody that is just the best at everything, just the best at everything, like as of the Rise of Skywalker, she's a better pilot than Poe Dameron, the best pilot in the. Well, as of as of the Force Awakens, she could pilot. The Millennium Falcon better than Han defeated a, Solo. Defeated a Sith Lord in hand to hand combat. Yeah. You know, did the Jedi mind trick, which is something that should be. I mean, that should take years oh, of Who's training. the last character we saw well, and, and here's the thing: Luke Skywalker, and before that was Obi-Wan Kenobi. Well, and, and here's Krenal, the idea, Krenal, is that at least in the original trilogy, it was assumed that the clones, based off of the prequels, were the stormtroopers. So you yeah. had clones. And so for Obi-Wan Kenobi to do a mind trick on a clone was one thing. But in the sequel trilogy, for Rey to do a mind trick on... Stormtroopers who were not, in fact, clones, they were actual but, but people. people. They were conscripts. That's a totally different, different level. Level, and and there was no training there involved. I mean, and and so you see this idea of essentially Jesus, and it's it's like how 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 do you feel for this Jesus character? There? Well, even Jesus went through more trials and tribulations than, than she did, and and, and that's before and that's, the obvious. Well, one. and that's where I kind of go yeah. with Ray is that you know Ray took physical. You know, and psychological damage, especially once you got into got got past season three. You're talking Cora, I think. You said uh, right Cora, Cora yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. Cora, Cora. Uh, yeah, and no, and I mean, you watched her question her beliefs. You saw her have to struggle with being as strong-willed as she was. What did she miss? Something you watched these doubts. She got very much, you know, in the first you know season, she got her bending taken away temporarily, but she still. 
You know, that yeah. was very traumatizing to somebody well, who's an innately gifted bender. she had to overcome a personality flaw of her own in order to figure out how to airbend. Yes. And 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 you start to see... There's growth that, in the that, character. There's growth, well, not only that, but you also... One of the things that I see that, that it, especially in The Legend of Korra and what Korra did, is that, you know, she made decisions her friends did not agree with. And so much so to the point where it caused breakups. It caused... There were moral issues between her and the people around her not mm-hmm. everybody just said oh she's in the room so let's just go with her which is seems no, to be and, what what happened with oh and, and, no and everybody in the room uh whether it's han solo or uh the only one that didn't give her her way in, initially was luke skywalker and i have my own issues with the way luke was portrayed in that trilogy that's a whole nother yeah, and um <sighs> But, you know, he's the only one to get Trilogy, any... you mean the one movie? Yeah. yeah, okay, yeah, he was in The Rise of Skywalker, but was he really in... I think he's a Force Ghost in Rise of Skywalker. I Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not, no. not... But, um, no, he was the only one to give any pushback, and even then, but he just kind of caves. Yeah, and, and here's the thing is that... To the, raise... I mean, and this is something that, you know, watching some film critiques of, is, is that we're watching... Our new character, Ray, mourned for Han Solo when the guy that was his best friend fought the Empire, the, saved each other's lives, his... was sitting right there, and we get nothing out of him. And it's um, so why is it that her? Why why her? Why does she get that scene? Well, and that and that's and that's the thing is that I it, it, it is poor it... writing, and you know, and and Cora, like I said, you know, Cora yeah. gets this scene. This really emotional scene with with Toph in season four, where she's like, "Toph, pull this metal out of me. I can't do this thing." You never see a scene with Ray where she says, "I can't do this." No, she always just stumbles into it or or does and it or. I, w- I will say this: the Cora Toph scene is how the Ray Luke scene should have played out, or the yeah, Star Wars version I can't thereof. Do- there was always this emotion there, but it was never earned. And it was never Toph, earned. Toph is. You know, the blind thing has never really bothered Toph, for those who know the story, but... No, no yeah, got- Toph being a... Uh, for, for those who don't know, who are tuning into this, to, <laughs> if you've never seen, you know, Toph is, is an earthbender. She has the ability to uh, magically move earth. There are four different types of benders. There's your airbenders. They can move air through technique and martial arts. There's firebenders. Do the same thing with fire. Waterbenders, same thing with water. And Toph was a blind girl who le- learned how to, by simply stepping on the ground, vibrating the ground, she could actually see It was like echolocation. Yeah. yeah, it was almost like echolocation, but using physical ground to do so. Indeed. And then not only that, but because because of this idea, she was actually the first to learn how to bend metal, how to seeing how to the, manipulate and, and that bend metal, metal. was so, a forged so, version. So yeah. Toph, I mean, and another amazingly strong female character that is just and Toph, that, Toph is so yeah, good. But, between Toph and Katara, I think Last Airbender had them covered, and then Korra yeah. had well, Korra and Asami. Yeah, and, yeah well, and Asami, yeah. Asami was such a good character. But but you get this idea that Korra went through trials and tribulations. Not everybody agreed with everything that she did, and that was nor the was thing. she perfect at everything. Nor was she perfect at everything, and some of the decisions that she made was, were to the detriment of the people around and her. And so, let's take our two paragons of the you know two respective franchises, yes. right? For each IP, yeah. You have Luke Skywalker and Rey. Yes. You have Ang and you have Korra. Mm-hmm. So, what did Ang do that Korra couldn't? Well, Ang had to rise up and defeat a hundred-year war. Yes. Aang had to learn all these things on the fly because he was a kid having to grow into an adult. Korra, we start with her as a teenager, 16, 17, something along those lines. I think he was 16. Yeah. And she has to learn that just being strong isn't enough. That's parallel to Rey. Rey already started off very capable, very strong. In one of the early scenes of Force Awakens, you watch her take out a bunch of thugs. Yes. With hand-to-hand combat that is, we'll say stylistic, to be generous. Yeah. Um... And so, okay, both are innately gifted, but where do we go from here? How do we get... Korra loses. She, on a, she always Repeatedly comes back. Repeatedly, in every season, but she, she does loses. lose occasionally. No, she yeah. loses in every... And, and it's not just like she loses in one episode. She loses many times over in multiple seasons in multiple different ways. Whereas philosophically, emotionally... With, with you know with her character relationship she's almost destroyed with with literally in almost one instance almost being killed and, and so, then being crippled from this the, and 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 she came back from it and she was strong because of it and 
and and all of this meant that she she just turned into this character that you wanted to see overcome the impossible. Indeed. And, and so you never saw any of this with Ray. There's growth there. And this is where I think Cora is a fundamentally better character than Ray. And it has nothing to do with her gender. Well, and that's why, that's why I think this episode is important. Oh, we don't like female characters. No, yeah. I love the legend of Cora more than I love the last airbender. As long as you write good characters, yeah. I don't care what gender they are. But you have to write good characters. Yeah. Luke Skywalker was a good character. Yes. Korra is a good character. Hell, Princess Leia was a good character. Princess Leia was a damn good character. And I, yeah, I, I always love to say, I'm sorry, I got to put this up because yeah, you yeah. the Princess Leia yeah. thing, right? Yeah. I, I love this scene, and, I, and and not a lot of people pay attention to it. But obviously, it's the bikini scene, you know, and everybody's like, oh, Princess Leia in the bikini. And obviously, there was a reason that Lucas did that. But this idea that that Jabba takes Princess Leia, this very respectful character, and puts her in a bikini to demean her as one of his showgirls. And then at the end, in that bikini, she throws a chain around Jabba's the neck chain and that chokes ties him out. To him. The chain that ties her to him, and she chokes him out with it. Yes. That, I mean, holy crap. Oh, and I love her- Holy inter- crap. I love her main introduction to the uh, Luke and Han. Where Luke comes in and he's got the stormtrooper yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, Aren't you a little short for a stormtrooper? Well, and then she blasts her way across oh, the hallway. Somebody had to save our skins. Yeah. And, and no. no, and so it's not the fact that we don't like strong female characters. It's that Rey is not that good of a character, period. No, she's not. She's and it's got blank- nothing to do with Daisy, Riz- Daisy Ridley's acting. Nothing to do with no, that. No. It has everything to do with just poor writing. They don't know. And I really will say this. It's people that don't understand what makes a strong woman a strong woman. No, it's and what makes a strong person a strong person? It's overcoming adversity. Yes. Ray never had any. No. She's defeating Sith Lords in the first movie. She never she is the only one of the three main Star Wars protagonists that didn't lose a limb. Or that didn't even take battle damage. Oh, we're I think there, she had a cut on her cheek what, one time. Yeah. And let's, you know, uh talk about when uh Count and Dooku flung the debris at Yoda and Yoda has to catch it and fling, you know, move it aside. These are big rocks, right? Yes. And this is Yoda struggles you know a little bit like you know it's not a big struggle but he kind of goes oh hey, yeah yeah it's heavy. in the warehouse yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and then but then ray all of a sudden there's this entire boulder field in the last jedi and she just and they're all orbiting around her like some well, sort of and and so compare and contrast that figure. with the moment where you know where where cora gets captured and they capture her and they inject her with this poisonous yes. metal and she can't you know, and it has to get pulled out of her. It cripples her. She faced the enemy and it crippled her and it took the help of her friends and her loved ones to get her out of that, which is one of the few times and Toph, I accept. A wise old mentor. Right. And Toph, the wise old mentor. But it's one of the few which times I, I kind of, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I kind of accept the, 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 the My Little Pony like friendship can help you because in certain moments you need. But you do need friends. But, but Ray the- never needed. Ray never needed friends. Well, and you, and you can see this I, in the writing because if you look at what Finn and Poe do in the movies, like that's supposed to be our, you know, Ray is our Luke mm-hmm. and F- uh, Finn is our Han, Chewie, I don't know. Uh, um, and Poe is our Han or Chewie, I'm not sure which. Oh. Um, but she never needs a Kenobi. No. She never needs a Yoda. No. She never needs a Vader. Because she beats them all in the first go round. In The Last Jedi, when she's uh, seeing Snoke and he tortures her, you know, it's this 30 second scene of her suspended in the air and he tortures her and, you know, she contorts her face and it's all supposed to be very painful. And then, you know, five minutes later, her and Kylo Ren are dicing up everybody on the freaking bridge. Yeah. Or in that uh, throne room. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause yeah. Even, even, it because didn't... even the villain loves her. It and now, 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 contrast that with Cora. She gets crippled, and the first time, almost the first time you see her in season four, she's she, beaten, she's broken, and she's isn't suffering. She's, she's using a walking stick. Keep in mind, this is somebody she's, in their early twenties. Yeah, yeah. She's not in the best place. Obviously, we're comparing a cartoon to real life acting, but, but and yet, but, but the but, cartoon is more believable. The cartoon is more believable because you, you, you got your butt she, handed to you. And she's relatable because, I'm sorry, how many times have you just walked through life just succeeding at everything and everybody just going, hey, you're awesome, dude, I'm going to give you stuff. Dude, if I sleep yeah. on a pillow wrong, I have a rough day the yeah, next right? day. Yeah. Like, but, and, it, and it just, 
just, you know, and, and, but this just innately being good at everything. And that's what I love is that, you know, Ray was innately good at everything. Cora was innately good at everything. By the time we hit the rise of Skywalker, she's a better pilot than the best pilot. Like, I mean, we are just handing her abilities that she hasn't earned. Whereas Cora had to fight tooth and nail. Airbending was hard Mm -hmm. because she's a strong-willed, bullheaded person and innately gifted. So one, she's arrogant. She thinks yeah. that because she got these three, this one will just be easy. Yeah. Because it's just airbending. Yeah. And then, oh, I actually have to learn a lesson in order for this to kind of click right. Yeah. And you never see Ray do that. What does she have to do to learn how to Jedi mind trick? She just figures it out. What does she have to do to defeat a Sith Lord? Or force pull a freaking lightsaber to her from halfway across a field. Oh, yeah. Like... And that's the thing is that it, it's gotten very little to do with the female protagonist. And like I said, I love The Legend of Korra. I like The Legend of Korra more than I like Avatar The Last Airbender due to all the philosophy and, <clears throat> and ideas like that. And not only that, but the struggles that Korra had to go through. Oh, yeah. And, and I mean, and, and, and what an amazing individual that the writers of The Legend of Korra wrote. I mean, and you just, you look at this, you look at this person, you look at what she went through. She had PTSD. She was beaten. She was oh, broken. Yeah. She was in a friggin' wheelchair. She was lost. She she had broken off ties with friendships. She lost faith. She in, was damaged. She, she was everything. And, and innately gifted and innately powerful. And this is uh, something I touched on when we talked about our uh, Legend of Korra video, which we can link in the yeah. description. Yeah, I'll link in the description. Um, but yeah. But is, uh, if you have two forms of writing, and we talked about this, Aang versus Korra, but yes. it works in the same here with Star Wars. Luke versus Rey. Both Luke and Aang both started as nobodies that had to ascend to be strong people in because the galaxy or world needed them. Yes. Both Rey and Korra started as inherently gifted and powerful individuals. But only that, one of them. But only one of them did anything with that. Rey shows up to a galaxy that is just accepting with open arms. You are, you know, Ray. Yeah. Whereas and Korra, Korra, nobody she, wanted Korra. What Korra can the Avatar do for me? What? Because we said that in our video. Yes. What can the Avatar do for me? But and and and, and uh, how interesting would it have been? And I'm not saying that you need to copy Korra here, but how interesting would it have been if Ray, you know, has to go and find the Resistance because she's that's her morality. Mm-hmm. She's going to fight. She has something wrong done to her due to the First Order. That can be a conflict. Think. Uh, Aunt Beru and Uncle Owen. From, yep. yep, yep, yep. And um, yeah, so your she Uncle goes, Ben moment, as yeah. a lot of people call it. Yeah, they, like, yeah I, indeed. And so she goes and finds the resistance, and she goes, well, I'm a Jedi. And they go, well, we've never heard of you. Well, are you one of Luke's students? Well, no. Well, how do we know you're a Jedi? And so she moves something, and they're like, all right, cool. Go sign a list with the other ones. Yeah. She can still be as gifted as she is, but she's got to prove herself. Not as a powerful individual, but as a personable moral and an actual character she has to prove herself well and she never did she never had to prove herself and i think it was in uh the rise of skywalker uh they 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 uh 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 poe did the the light speed uh skipping bs and was like oh but we need ray here without ray we're gonna lose or or some i I can't oh yeah i can't save our skins as well as ray could or something and i'm like but but why can't you you're the best best freaking pilot but no we have to give that to ray and I'm not going to lie, her, that whole arc kind of feels like a video game. Where, uh, And I know that's an overused analogy for well, any yeah. overly CG'd movie. But it really We're does. And the fact that Ray started out at level one on the desert planet and did all the side quests before fighting the main boss. And then it's just a boss checklist. She goes and she defeats Snoke with Kylo's help. That's the mid-boss, right? That's the mid-boss. Yeah. And then by the end of the you know series, she's leveled up enough to go face Palpatine, the end boss. Well, and which and you have to think like this. I mean, uh, you, th- th- there there's so oh, well, much finding here. all the MacGuffins around oh, the place. It's, and the, a, it's and a video so game. There's so much here. There's there's so much there. She never destroyed any relationships. Cora did. Cora made almost irreparable damage to a few relationships. And the, the few times they've even teased that Ray might do that, they retcon it instantly. When oh, she no. blows up the transport, oh, that wasn't Chewie's. That was a different one. And yeah, Chewie's no, fine. No, yeah, but, yeah, but Ray, but Ray made a decision at the end of season. Or, uh, Cora made the end uh, a decision at the end of uh, season two. Cora, Cora, end of season two makes a decision which which creates a villain. Yeah, for her that almost kills her. Her decision in season two that Causes she believes. 
it enables the rise of a villain that almost kills her and takes yeah, over power. Her decision, although it may have been a good decision, there are still consequences to it, and I don't feel that Ray ever faced any of those consequences. No. It's got nothing to do with being a female character. What nothing, if, nothing to do and with this a female is, character. This is pure fan fiction, but it's more interesting than what we got. What if by defeating Snoke, she enabled Palpatine to come back? At least there you have a struggle. I doubt we'll ever get there. And time's up at this point. Yeah, so. I know. All right, the clock's out on us on this one. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you guys like this discussion. This one. Cora over we, Ray. Cora over Ray, period. <laughs> Hopefully you guys uh, like these discussions and uh, stick around to the end of the video to find out how you can support the channel even better. Thank you guys so much for watching. I drink with crazy and we will see you all next time. Hey guys, thanks so much for checking out the video. We hope you enjoyed the discussion as much as we did. I know we've been having these for a long time just between the two of us. If you did enjoy this content and you want to see more like it, please share this with all your friends and we'd love to hear your own opinions down in the comments. Agree, disagree, we want to hear it either way. If you do want to support this channel and we'd greatly appreciate it, hit that subscribe button and hit that bell notification for every time we go live. Hope to see you guys next time on A Drink With Crazy.